Hi, I'm Carrie Franceman. And I'm Jonathan Plackett. Um, and we are um, a wife and husband uh, team. We are also parents to a two and a half year old daughter. And we are co creators on um, this book, which we made Gender Swap Fairy Tales. The idea originated um, actually when I was a little boy and um, my dad used to read bedtime stories to me and my sister. What we didn't know at the time was he was actually gender swapping some of the characters, kind of to make it more interesting for my sister, so there were some interesting female characters, but also for himself I think it was probably a lot more fun for him to read. Um, so the end result was we ended up with a whole bunch of characters that didn't conform to the normal gender stereotypes. Fast forward 30 years. I'm now married to Carrie, we have a daughter of our own. We'd like her to grow up in a world where she can imagine to be any person she likes. And so I created a gender swap uh, algorithm that allows you to swap the gender of any text that you put into it. So when Jonathan told me about uh, his gender swap um, algorithm, I was like super excited. This is like a subject which I'd been really interested in since I studied it at university. I immediately thought of um, public domain fairy tales. These are some of the best stories which have ever been written. They're some of the first stories we're exposed to. They're some of the oldest stories. And also they, they contain kind of moral lessons and ideas of what, what is good and evil. Um, and they have a lot of archetypes as well. And so as soon as we put the, the text into the, the algorithm, what came out the other side was, was really exciting. It was this whole bunch of new characters, uh, kings longing for a child, princesses in shining armour, it's a huge giantess and a lady wolf, um, and young men being rewarded for looking past the flaws in beastly princesses. The best thing about the stories themselves was even in their swap form, they were just as good for boys as they were for girls. They gave really powerful, um, varied roles to the female characters. Um, but it allowed the, the male characters to be kind-hearted and caring and in need of protection. So when I started researching, obviously I first had to look at all the hundreds of thousands of images which had been done of fairy tales until this point and there are so many and it's been done to death um so i kind of google you know google image searched them um and kept like documents of of all the images for cinderella or red riding hood um and those kind of really famous scenes come out again and again um it was really difficult and really intimidating because i just thought what can i possibly contribute to this amazing genre which hadn't been done um, but thankfully I had a trick in my back pocket because, because of the gender swapping algorithm, we were doing something new. So how I made the algorithm was, uh, I originally thought it was going to be quite easy, that it would just be uh, a, sim a case of almost like a auto replacing word, you know, where I just put in the, the kings and the queens and uh, it would be uh, just an instant job done. Um, but unfortunately the English language turns out to be a little bit strange. So it was a bit more difficult than I expected. It didn't take one day as I'd hoped. It took, uh, it took a few months to, to get it to work. And one of the things which I really um, noticed when I was uh, researching the old images was um, they had quite a, an obvious gender disparity between the characters. So I was just kind of copying the, the old pictures out and trying just swapping the genders around. So the princes became kind of passive, being rescued with their clothes clinging to them and falling off them, you know, their throats exposed and being in very submissive positions. And then the, the princesses were like more active and, you know, going out and seeking adventure. And it was really interesting because just when you copied the exact old pictures but swap them, you could really see quite an unusual and surprising um, new images emerging. So even though our book is called 
gender swap fairy tales. Um, we actually don't think there's only two genders to swap. Uh, we understand that now we live in a culture where there's not just masculine and feminine and people are much more comfortable inhabiting all the spaces in between and being uh, gender non-binary or queer or trans. What we're doing by swapping feminine and masculine is we're just kind of illuminating and disrupting this idea of a, a binary uh, gender system in our society. And we're, we're hopefully getting people to question um, gender and what it means. So obviously we'd um, written this story for our two and a half year old daughter and it was really important to us um, what she thought of this. And we got a little insight into it because every day I would spend hours drawing and um, painting all these, these illustrations and then at the end of the day I'd show her the results. And I just finished the Little Red Riding Hood painting which showed this massive big domineering lady wolf um, shadowing over a little um, Red Riding Hood boy. And then later on we were watching a David Attenborough documentary and um, I said to her, oh, if you could be any animal in the world, what would you be? She paused for a second before saying, big bad wolf. And we thought, yes, <laughs> not a princess, phew. <laughs> so our book, Gender Swapped Fairy Tales, is due out with Faber and Faber in um, November, the 5th of November. So buy it from all good um, bookstores. <laughs> and buy it for your slightly sexist uncles as well. <laughs> or slightly sexist aunties. <laughs> <laughs>